everybody to our Service Excellence <coughs> Initiative launch. Um, this endeavor has been a, an enormous commitment for us for time and for money, but we believe that our patients are worth it. Your families are worth it, you and your coworkers are worth it. This will be a three year long commitment um, with the initiative led by the best trainers in the continent of North America. And then it will be up to us to sustain this. So in these three years, um, we're gonna have to learn a lot and uh, get really good at service excellence. Um, this, the ex executive committee of DCH is committed to our service excellence council is committed and our service excellent advisors are committed. Okay, why is service excellence so important? And I guess the, the part that has excited me the most about this is every day of our lives, we are all consumers. No matter where you go, you're a consumer. If you go to the grocery store, you're a consumer. If you go to Agland, you're a consumer. If you go to Walmart, you're a consumer. And we all know when we spend our money somewhere how we want to be treated. You want to get your best bang for your buck. You want to be treated with respect. You want to be treated quickly. That's what our patients want too. We have a little twist to things because we save lives on top of it. We're not bagging your groceries at Walmart, but we're, we're saving your life on top of that. So with the mobile society that we're now in, people can go elsewhere. I mean, they want our hospital here, but if they're lacking in any of the above I mentioned, they can drive to Imperial or McCook. So it is, it's not only vitally important for all of us because we, we love this place and we want to see it succeed, but our community, our school system, our parents, our children, our family that live here, this, this facility means everything to this community. So this endeavor is huge for the success of our whole community, Dundee County, the service area that we serve, Stratton, you know, it's all tied into one <coughs> huge success. So um, I probably didn't pop, speak into the microphone enough, but. I don't think I'm supposed to announce the council until later, but I will. <laughs> I think it's time to talk. It's time to meet your service excellence council. Um, this is one of the groups that is the heart and soul of the service excellence program, um, a main driver of the force. It's made up of managers and frontline staff, and you'll be hearing from all of us regularly. So on our service excellence council are Lake and Burbis, who's the chair, Renee Fink, who's the vice chair, Sandy Knopfsinger, who's the program director, Karen Metzger is a super coach to the service excellence advisors, Kathy Rose is a super coach for us for HCAPS, Jeannie Hansen is a super coach for the medical providers, Sarah Weimer, I'm sorry, I can't say your name, I'm thinking of wieners, I'm thinking of hot dogs. <laughs> Sarah Weimer is the service huddle champion for the do it program and do it is an acronym that stands for daily ongoing improvement tactics because we have to get good at this every day we have to be on our best game every day and Annette Gleason is also a service huddle champion for do it and then there's me I'm the CEO so looking around at the service excellence council do you Um, I'm sure that you all know someone on the council and I would hope that um, you would feel comfortable going up to anyone or even if you've got somebody specifically that you feel comfortable with, sharing your ideas and, and offer them to the program for improvement within our specific facility. Um, I want to apologize because the plan was to do this outside, give everybody a little air, but unfortunately the wind doesn't agree with me and now we're inside, so sorry about that. Um, why the emphasis on excellence and service now? Patients are smarter, better informed, have higher expectations than ever before. Patients no longer find travel as a barrier to getting the care they need. Being the hometown hospital is no longer going to be enough. Patients are willing to use the extra time and money to travel distances where in the years past, patients resorted to using the closest and most convenient hospital. We need to be the hospital that brings people from all over the area. 
We need to strive to be a place where patients and their families want to go for the most important medical decisions they might make. A facility where our customers feel cared about and taken care of. Although patient satisfaction is the goal, employee satisfaction is the way to reach that goal. We, are a facility, we as a facility need to be open to change and open to the suggestion for improvement that our coworkers might make for us. If we come together as a united staff, both in employee engagement and satisfaction, satisfying our patients won't be something we have to work towards. It will, be, it will become how, who we are. I'm gonna move over here so I can see down the hall. Um, at some point, we are going to give you a handout, I think, but um, I'm gonna give you just a really fast overview of HCAPs. So who can remember what HCAPs, what those six letters stand for? Anybody? And honestly, we have weight. Performance? How about, more importantly, because I mean, we have so many acronyms. It's the Healthcare Consumer Assessment. Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Quality Care. Healthcare Providers and Systems. Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems. Um, but I think they've been changed. More important than what those stand for is what is HCAP? That's probably the most important thing. From the patient's, from the patient's perspective. And that's why HCAPs is so different. Um, is because it is the first nationally standardized publicly reported survey on the patient's perspective of the care. So hospitals have been doing surveys since the beginning of time, but the goal with HCAPS was to really come up with something so that we could do um, meaningful comparisons between hospitals. Um, so the same survey that you would take after being in Denver County Hospital is the same survey I would take if I was going to Denver at St. Luke's or yes, whatever. You're asked the same question, so you can do those comparisons. Um, and even though it's Medicare mandated, Medicare, it's important to know, they didn't come up with the questions. There was so much testing that went into HCAPS before they rolled it out. And the questions were really developed by patients who were in pilot studies and test groups. And they said, this is what's important to us as patients. So, um, And then it's publicly reported, which was also <coughs> new. So if you go to <coughs> Medicare's website, and I encourage you to do that if you've never done that, um, go to hospitalcompare.hhs.gov, and you can compare hospitals and see how their patients rate their hospitals on their experience along with pneumonia care and surgical care and heart failure care. Um, so I really would encourage you to do that. Um, and then um, the other thing about HCAPS is that one of the goals was to increase transparency and accountability by reporting that publicly so that that would kind of drive hospitals to want to improve their quality. And then to have better informed healthcare consumers so that they would go to these sites and they would say, well, I'm gonna spend my healthcare dollars here because they have less infections and they treat their patients better because healthcare today is a very competitive industry. And then finally, it, it does affect our bottom line, you know, not to the effect that your big PPS hospitals, I mean, your big hospitals, they have a certain percentage of their Medicare reimbursement that is actually tied to their age caps. So I think in 2015, like 1.5% of their reimbursement um, was tied to how well they perform on quality measures, and that's gonna go to 2% in 2017. So of that 1.5%, 70% is based on how well they do on like surgery, quality measures, and heart failure, and pneumonia, and then 30% is based on their age caps. Now for us, right now, we're cost-based reimbursement, so it's, it's not tied to our reimbursement yet, but they are looking at critical access hospitals and trying to figure out how they can do that. So it will happen eventually. Right now, how it affects us um, is that they've tied our SHIP grants to it, and I don't know if you've heard of that, but that's the Small Hospital Improvement Program, and that's some federal funds that we get every year um, that we can use for things like meaningful use, um, IT things, I think we've used them for melamins in the past, so, I mean, there's some dollars on the table that we don't wanna lose that are tied to our age caps right now. Um, on the back page, if you look at that handout, it shows you the eight domains of HCAPs, and then the, the ninth major is what they call a global major. Um, and there's kind of some themes through there. Uh, courtesy and respect is a big theme. There's several things that have to do with medications, um, and then another big theme is information on discharge. 
And then that last global um, area is how you would rate the hospital and would you recommend us to your family and friends. HCAPS is all about the frequency with which we provide a service, and that's kind of different from other surveys. If you think about most of the surveys we do, those are more at how well we provide a service or the patient's judgment of how well we provide it. So like we perform it poorly or excellently, fairly. HCAPS is about frequency. <laughs> so when they ask these questions to the patient, their choices are they never did it, they sometimes did it, they usually did it, they always did it. And we want our patients to answer always. Um, we always kept their room clean. We always treated them with courtesy and respect. So always needs to be our, our focus from here on. Um, and I think it's good to know too, HCAPS isn't our goal. HCAPS is a tool that helps us get to the goal of a better patient experience for every patient that walks through the door. Um, they wanted to talk a little bit about our latest scores. And I did run those off, but I, I'm not gonna pass them out till later. I'll bring them around to your departments later because I didn't want people trying to read things while we're trying to talk. Um, they said to mention our lowest score uh, for this quarter. And the one we, that's the lowest this quarter is medication information. Um, that's not usually one that is one of our lower scores. So one thing you're gonna hear us talk a lot about is how we can improve our response rate uh, because the better response rate you have, the more you can count on your information as being reliable. It's hard, like the last quarter of 2015, we only had one patient response. Um, this quarter we've had three. Uh, patients, they can contact them from 48 hours, clear up to six weeks after they leave here. Um, so that's why you hear us talk about you know, trying to wow the patients because you want to really have a good experience so they can remember it six weeks out. You know, I just don't want to have an average experience. Um, Non-clinical, where do we focus if you're in a non-clinical area? We're all caregivers, we really are. Um, if you're not at the bedside, you're taking care of somebody that's taking care of the patient. So, And we all have patient contacts. Um, we all pass patients in the hall. Do you smile? Do you make eye contact? If they look lost, do we help them? And I think we, we do a really good job. But just think about phone contacts. We all talk on the phone to patients. Um, that smile really does go over the phone lines. So, you know, people that spend a lot of time on the phones, they really recommend that you have a mirror right at your station because that smile really does communicate through the phone lines. Hello, hi. <laughs> um, you know, and the other thing I would say too is, you know, nursing can do just a perfect job. They can treat that patient with courtesy and respect and, and do everything right. But if that patient walks into the business office, and I'll pick on Cheryl because I know this would never happen, but if nursing's done it all right and they walk in there and have a question and she chews them up and spits them out, you know, when they call with the survey and ask the patient, did nursing treat you with courtesy and respect? In the patient's mind, the question may say nursing, but in their mind, it's every one of our staff that they encountered from the moment they walked through that door until the moment they walked out. So um, I think that's something we, a lot of times staff think, well, that's a nursing thing or a doctor thing, but it's, it's all of us, so. And as, as hospital administrator, I am firmly pledging to fulfill my role to secure, secure the success of the Service Excellence Initiative. Um, every, all the members of the Service Excellence Council and the committee are on board and they have jobs to do. We're pledged to you and we are each pledged to each other to lead for success. Um, one of the things that you will see me do, I'm going to be out and about a lot more than I was before. Um, my goal is to do the daily rounds in your departments um, and also to greet any of the new patients in the facility. Um, I am pleased that I have been received well by the patients that I've seen so far. Um, we talk about what's going on in the facility, um, you know, their care, if there's something they need, um, and they've given me just um, kind of off the cuff great ratings on all of you so far, so I'm, I'm very pleased with that. But part of my reason for visiting them too is to um, give them the heads up about the call that they're going to get with HCAPS, just so that they know to watch for it. I tell them to answer the questions honestly, um, but I, I wanna give them the heads up so that when they think it's a telemarketer, they go ahead and take the call and they do take the time to answer the survey. I let them know that it is important to us. Number six, which is where we share, right? <laughs> <laughs>
And one, one thing I forgot to mention earlier when I was talking, I think we all do a, an amazing job, certainly for improvement of treating our patients, you know, a little bit better, but I, I think the real improvement is going to come in this process of how we treat each other, which in turn helps us carry out our jobs better. If we're, if, if Kathy and I can't stand each other and won't speak nicely to each other, we're probably going to treat people we come into contact right after we see each other that way. So this process, I think, is going to really help us. And I know you hear me refer to us as a family a lot, and I think that's what we are. I spend more time with most of you than I do my husband. So, you know, it's easy sometimes to snip at each other, but we we need to have the tools to try to come together as a family and, and deal with each other in a respectful manner. So I'm hoping that this program will, will help us all embrace that. And as directors, managers, and supervisors, we plan to lead the service excellence. Um, one thing we're going to do, and I'm really excited about this, is we are going to have, and you have the payroll stuffers, that we will be doing our first employee satisfaction survey in several years. So that's a goal to have that done yearly now. And hopefully next week we'll have the computer up and we'll let everybody know how they can take those surveys. Um, we'd like to address any issues, tackle them, and, and then move on. I think that's going to be a goal is to put the past in the past and, and move forward with things that will um, help our facility just be amazing because I, I know that's what, what we can be. Um. Sandy, as the PD, and me as the chair of the council, we're going to be able available for any anything that you want to tell us that comes up. You don't feel like telling Wendy that you're mad at her, Shelby. That's what we're for, like to help resolve those problems so they don't escalate. And so when we go out on Friday night, we're not all bitching about Wendy yet. So I'm sorry, we're not all complaining <laughs> about Wendy at the bar. <laughs> so so we <laughs> Accountability is going to be a, a big tool for this too. If there's deadlines, um, we'll, we'll give deadlines and we expect returns uh, from all the way from Rita all the way down. Everyone will be held accountable for deadlines and that, that will be a, a given for the program that, that we have deadlines. Um, we'll talk about it um, in greater detail with departments, but Part of, of the process will also be to implement daily, or excuse me, weekly huddles in your own departments where you'll cover four agenda items. You know, what did we do right this week for service excellence with our, our patients? What maybe didn't go so right with service excellence in our patients? What can we do to improve that issue that didn't go quite right? And then let's get back to work and, and uh, make a difference in people's lives. So. Those, we've talked about maybe whiteboards in each department so they can, they can address those and have a, an agenda to follow. So that, in, that stuff will come a little bit later on. So how do we learn more? <clears throat> Excuse me. You have your newsletter here. Take that read it or throw it away don't leave it on the floor read through it and keep it um, the back page with the HCAPS information is really useful there's there's good stuff there um, keep that keep it, keep it handy um, it's good information uh, we'll be doing these as regular correspondence so keep that that's one good way to have information there will be more of these in the future i believe we're also going to use this bulletin board here in the hallway um, above the food that will be our service excellence bulletin board so all of our communication regarding the service excellence initiative um, we'll try to communicate it on that bulletin board. So that will be another place that you can see the communication for that. Uh, we've, uh, we've explained the huddles. They're just short 15 minute stand up huddles. It's not a department meeting. It's not a big long meeting. It's just a quick meeting. So 
you need to start um, watching for when your department will have your meeting and when you're going to start those. So your manager will get with you 